Shall we play a game? Happy New Year! Hello everyone, welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. In this video, I'm excited to show you all my first purchase for the new year. I negotiated this on January 1st with the seller on eBay, and I received it on the 6th in this large box that measures 20 inches in all directions. And it weighs in at a whopping 40, 41 pounds. Pretty heavy. Now there's three things in this box. One in particular I'm really excited to see because it will bring back some memories from when I was about 7 years old. And no, it's not Atari related, but it's gaming related. That should be cool to see. But, you know, enough of talking here. Let's just get this out of the box so we can all check it out. First item you can see is not the particular one I was talking about, but... It is the Atari trackball controller in the box with a price tag on there. Pretty cool. We'll get to that soon, but let's put that to the side. Nope, I didn't buy a pair of shoes. I know what's in this. We'll put this to the side and open it up in a second. This isn't the big ticket item in the box, but it is another Atari item, the Atari 130XE. I do have one already, but I wanted another one in a box so that could stay original and then displayed while the other is modified when needed. All right, here it is. Hopefully you can see it. It's the Fairchild Channel F gaming system. Been wanting this for quite some time. Finally got one in a box too. Let's check this out closely. Now all three of these items were obtained from an estate sale. And as you can see, they all had their original boxes too, which was really cool to see because you can make the assumption that perhaps the previous owner might have taken great care of it to at least keep the original box. Now I should say that the seller did clearly state that none of these were tested. So it's an as is other than the 130XE, which was tested to show that the power light indicator did illuminate. But Truly, nothing has been tested functionality-wise. So, I could have three non-working items, which would be really sad, but I'm hopeful here. We'll start now with this one. This is the main item that really excites me, as I mentioned. This is the Fairchild Channel F. And as some of you may know, this console is one of the earliest gaming systems. It came out in 1976 by Fairchild Camera and Instrument, which would be a year earlier than the Atari 2600. So when I was a child in 1978, this was my first gaming system. I mentioned before I never owned an Atari 2600 as a kid, mainly because the Channel F, this one here, was my first intro to gaming at home. And then in 1982, I got the Atari 800, and from there on, it was pretty much the computer side. But getting back to this Channel F, you can see that the box is in really good condition. I mean, I've seen others online that were pretty rotted out or just not even in existence. So I'm happy to see that. There is also another thing that came with this that was in that shoebox. So let me show you that. So here's that shoebox. What else was in there? Well, check that out. So there's also 13 games, which only one did not have a box to come with it. And these are all pretty much in decent condition. Yeah, the boxes don't look perfect, but I mean, I've got a box. Some of these don't usually come in a box that you buy online. If you can even find them. Now, I'm sure that the console itself here is going to probably take some elbow grease for the scuffs and markings to be removed based on what I saw online, which is totally fine by me, but I'm just hoping that it really works. So let's check this out, see what we have inside. Okay, we have this pretty cool warranty card, and it has the date when this was purchased. Christmas Day, December 25th, 1977, place of purchase, the Lion Store, and then the serial number, which does match the actual council, and a few more pieces of information, and here is the unit, 
I mean, look at this. It's got everything in there to hold it in place like it should. Nothing is ripped apart or missing. I'm going to first check this out with what was already on here as far as the games itself goes before I put the cartridges in just to make sure this thing works. Let me get that set up, but let's just take each thing out here one by one. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Channel F console, the controllers you can see are coming into the side. These are not removable. I mean, they're built in. And where are they? They're inside here. Let's take a look. These look great, and they feel great too. I'm going to plug this in. Again, test the onboarded games here, hockey, tennis, just to see that it does come up with a display. And then we'll go clean it up from there, and then we'll try all the cartridges. All right, I have this thing plugged in, not into the wall yet, but it is connected to my television, waiting to go on channel 3. I did look at the cable for the power cord. It does not look frayed. Or anything like that of concern so I don't believe I'll have any issues with that it is turned off in the back so let's plug this in and see what we get turning this on looks good let's do number one there's hockey let's just check out number two which would be tennis. Reset. There's tennis. How awesome is that? Let's just make sure the controllers work. My controllers work perfect. Well, now that we established that the built-in games work and the controller works, the other thing to test now is the cartridge slot to make sure that connection to the cartridge works as well as the cartridge themselves. So let's try each one of them. All right, so to avoid boring you all with five minutes of play on each of these cartridges, what I'll do is just go through each one just to make sure it comes up and that it plays when I press start. Now I have to say that I did clean each cartridge's exterior and the contacts inside. It did not look like this. I'll have to say it was a challenge. I think it took me at least three hours to go through each one of these as well as the console itself. It was just heavily, heavily coated with grease and dirt and grime. But I did use this, the Oxit, and this works wonders with oxidation and corrosion on metal. Definitely, definitely use this to clean these things and anything else that may be uh, in need of getting some uh, oxidation removed or corrosion and as I said I clean the contacts that were inside the channel left so that we should have no issues with the connection from the cartridge to the console all right let's take a look now at each one starting with cartridge number one well that's not a good sign now for cartridge one let me try it one more time to reseat it Okay, moving on. Cartridge number two. Looks good. Cartridge number three. Looks good. Cartridge number four. Cartridge number five. Cartridge number eight.
Cartridge number nine. Cartridge number ten. Cartridge number eleven. Cartridge number twelve. Cartridge number 13. Cartridge number 17. Last but not least, cartridge 21. So, not too bad. 12 of the 13 cartridges worked, only the number one cartridge did not work, which I'll give it another run through, a bunch of contact cleaner, and see if I can get that one to go, but still, not a bad percentage. So now that we established this is a working console, almost 100% of all the games work, and it's been cleaned, it looks awesome. Here's some before and after photos. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of work that was put into it, but it was well worth it, and I am ecstatic. So now, the Fairchild Channel F console is a success. On to the next item that was in this box of goodies. All right, well, here it is, the 130XC in the box. Let's just get a better look at this. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be the one I'll display or the one I'll just play and modify because those are my differences between some of these units that I buy and collect one I'll have that's like pristine and you know looks just like OEM of the original and I'll just have it like on a shelf just to look at admire and then the other one I'll modify or just have it as a gaming system that I'll play heavily on or maybe even put it over here in my workshop I think this is going to be just as good as the um, Fairchild that I have because again it's all from the same estate sale from the same previous owner and I am very optimistic so let's open this up and check it out serial numbers intact I mean this box is in great condition but am I gonna display it no so let's see what we've got Pull. Already I like it. It's got the actual bagging around it. It's got the styrofoam supports on each side Let's slide this out This coloration is not at all bad. It looks great. It's not yellow at all So Here is the rest of the equipment that came with it Take a look at that to make sure the cord is in good condition. Oh, even <laughs> even the switch box is here. Got a bunch of these good memories. And the RF connection. Yep. We won't be needing this, but I do have that. Just looking at this keyboard. 
yeah it's a little bit dirty I gotta clean it up still has the plastic on it excellent no cracks nothing at all and definitely no modifications and I only say that because looking at the other stuff it doesn't look like there was anything done to these items these were just sitting in a box for many 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 years all right well let me give it a good clean up here and we'll give it a plug in and see how it goes all right I opted not to clean this up completely because I want to do a baseline and make sure it actually works and then I'm gonna open it up and clean the louvers because you can see these louvers are not the easiest to clean on these types of uh, models I just open it up brush it off nice and clean also air blow this keyboard out but for now let's just power this thing on and let's see if it goes through the test of actually working which I am confident it will and I'm not using its AC adapter I'm just using a more modern one that I have here we go that beautiful blue screen it looks awesome let's go and do a test So let's just run all these tests. All right, well that looked great. Everything checked out as far as the high level point of view when we're talking about a onboard self test goes and physically or aesthetically it looks great as well so I'm very happy with this now the funny thing is that I bought this one or at least put the offer in for this one with the other two items that came from the same seller was because my other 130XC I thought I didn't have a box that came with it well I guess I was completely wrong so here's the box that came with the one I have in front of you that was the one I was just showing and my other 130XC, I actually found the box for that one. It also has matching serial numbers on the side. Everything's in here as well. All the styrofoam and other accessories like the power adapter and the RF cable. So that's a moot point now. So it's really deciding whether this is the one that I want to keep on the shelf or this is going to be the one I'll be heavily using and modifying it. So let's take a look. So that's this one that you just saw I got. And here is the one I had on my shelf. I think you can already tell the difference if you put it side by side. There is quite a difference. I mean, I really didn't think there was at first, but there is. This is kind of like a smoker's uh, teeth. No offense to those smokers out there. This one looks perfect. I, I guess I really didn't look at it closely enough. I didn't realize the keys are very nice. I remember taking this one all apart as well and looking inside to see if any modifications were done. This is very much original. These louvers were kind of hard to clean, I remember, for both of these, but it's not too bad when you just take a brush plastic one and just kind of run them through some hot water and or warm water that is and just clean it out they came out great it's really not a matter of um, functionality it's more of the image itself and I think this is the one I'm going to keep on the shelf like I've had and the one I just got will be the one I'll use as my game playing one and possibly modifying if I find anything I want to modify it with so now that's settled, we're going to go with the last item, which is a CX-22 trackball controller. All right, well, here it is, the CX-22 trackball from Atari. This came out in 1983, so let's see what's in the box. Again, from the same seller or the same owner that the seller got this from on eBay. It was an estate sale with these three items, the 130XE, the Fairchild Channel, uh, channel F with uh, 13 games and then this 
nice. Everything is included as far as the packaging goes, which is very, very nice to see. No instructions, but that's all right. Let's just see if this thing is operational. It was sold as not tested, but it's a chance that's worth taking when you know someone took care of it to keep the boxes, as I always say. So this is the trackball. I will test this with Missile Command and see how it goes. Pretty well kept. So this is joystick or trackball switch on the side. So let's just try this on my 130XE that I just bought and we'll see how this works. And a funny note on that 130XE, here it is again. And as you remember the last segment, I just said that I was going to use that as my workhorse or my uh, heavily used one versus the other one, which is for display. Well, I come to find out that I already have another 130XC. So I have three of these now. This one is not damaged at all. It's in great working condition. It's opened. And there's a reason why. Because the previous owner kind of stripped the screw posts and over, had oversized screws. Let me show you this. So these were the screws that they were using. And you can see a different size, three of the four are definitely larger so the plastic posts are all stripped and I was just gonna fix that that's all that's waiting for this one to be operational I really don't need three I like to have maybe just two I mean just I feel like I have too much of the XLs already and now the XEs so maybe a big maybe I'll probably do a giveaway like I did a few months ago for the XL which was the 800 XL plus the 1050 drive this one will probably just be the 130 XE and it'll be this particular one here once I get the right screws in there so it's securely set. But it is working perfectly, no problems, and it's already been cleaned. Um, it's just a matter of me deciding on if I should do that or not. I think I need more participation. I only think we had a handful last contest. I want to get more people involved because I think after the fact people were asking about it and I just think it was too quick of a win. So we'll see. But let's get back to this trackball. I have the CX-22, the Atari trackball. It's connected to the Atari 800XL. I know I said I was gonna do the 130XE, but I figured it's a lot faster just to get the cartridge inserted into the XL, and that would just be a quicker test rather than having to boot up through FujiNet. 800XL's got the cartridge in, ready to go. 1702 monitor is on. Let's turn this on and check it out. All right, so let's start. Let's see how this goes. Uh, okay. I like a fire. Both buttons work. I can't go left or right. Not good. Let me make sure the setting's right on the bottom. It is on joystick. I did read the online manual for this. Having it on trackball will actually just go opposite. So in other words, up and down goes left and right versus left and right going up and down. So that tells me we have a problem. <laughs> so let's turn this thing off. Obviously, I'm not able to go left and right. So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. Well, I've opened this up clean out the insides and I tested it again still a problem it won't register left or right but before I get into that one thing I do recommend is getting the service manual so if you do own this and you do open this up and you don't know how to get this top cover off because it's still sitting there it doesn't come off after you take the four screws from underneath well there's two other holes underneath that have no screws but what you're supposed to do based on a service manual is to put a screwdriver through there and push up to help pry it open after you get the four screws out and what it does it actually pushes on these posts anyone choose anyone and it'll give you a little leverage after it pops open and you can put your finger in there and pull it off it's better that way than trying to do it from the ends or the sides where you may crack this because it could be very brittle after 40 plus years so service manual is the key and the service manual is very key to symptoms like i'm experiencing which is 
saying that the cursor won't move left or right. That's exactly what it says in a service manual. The possible cause is the capacitor might be shortened or open. And I am not going to go ahead and do it in this video because I don't think I have the right ones to replace it. But I will get my multimeter out and test it and we'll see if we can fix it. Um, but let's look at this really quick on the PCB itself. Some chips on here. It's pretty cool to see that they have this encoding wheel it's called on this roller shaft. I mean this comes off very easily and this wheel spins and it goes over this piece here which is called the optocoupler. It's this part right here and this is what spins inside over in between and that's how it registers and the same thing to do the up and down on this side. So I've been playing with it for about 15 minutes and still can't get it to work so I think it's definitely a capacitor issue as it states in the manual. Uh, these buttons though I did notice are pretty chintzy as far as the firing buttons go. Don't know if that could be upgraded but let's try to get this to work first before I even go there. I will have another video out shortly but I mean it's a great looking trackball that's for sure. Fortunately it doesn't work at this moment. I guess if we recap this really quickly here, I got a box, Fairchild Channel F console, along with 13 games, 12 of which were boxed, and 12 of the 13 worked. I'm sure I can get that last one to work with some contact cleaning. And then I had the 130XE in the box, it worked great. And then I had this one, the Atari CX22 trackball, also in the box, it worked halfway, it only goes up and down. But I'm sure I'll get all this to work. Overall, it's success. I think that's a pretty cool deal. All three of these items were my first major purchase this year. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Let me know if you've ever owned any of these three items. Obviously, the 130XE uh, is not as unusual or uncommon to have. But nonetheless, let me know. So until next time, keep that gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.